After a long work day on a rainy evening, I took a taxi home. It was already late, the streets were empty, and only the wet asphalt glittered with reflections of the lamp posts. The taxi I called arrived quickly. The driver, a man around 50 with gray hair, seemed friendly. He looked at me through the mirror and smiled. Where to? He asked, and I provided my address. We set off, and soon, I noticed that the driver's route did not resemble the one I was accustomed to. He drove me through old streets I had never seen before. At the first stop, in a dark alley, the driver halted the car and pointed at an old building. He asked, See that house? A terrible murder happened there 20 years ago. The victim was your rage. I felt a chilling cold down my spine. Why did he tell me this? Why have we stopped? I asked nervously. Just wanted to show you a point of interest. He replied with another smile. We continued our journey, and I hoped it was just a strange outburst from the driver. But after a few minutes, he stopped the car again. Now, we were standing next to an old church. Its domes and walls were weathered, and it looked abandoned. The driver began. Do you know what happened here? Thirty years ago, in this church, a priest lost his mind, and... I felt suffocated. This ride was turning into a nightmare. I wanted to leave the car and walk, but the driver had already started moving again. As we continued on the road, the driver narrated more horrifying stories about the places we were passing by. With each stop, I felt fear engulfing me more and more. Soon, he drove me into a narrow alley where an abandoned apartment stood. Here, in this abandoned building, a serial killer resided a couple of decades ago. He believed that he was collecting the souls of his victims to pass into another world, painlessly. I felt the skin on the back of my head beginning to cover with cold sweat. The driver continued, not waiting for my response. He was arrested, but the police never found the bodies of all his victims. They say the spirits still dwell in this house, yearning for justice. He continued and stepped on the gas, driving me out of the alley. We continued on our route, and now we stopped near an old cemetery. The moonlight made the shadows of the trees on the graves strange and frightening. Go. This area is abundant with secrets. Here, under this sacred ground, lie the victims of a long-forgotten disease that took hundreds of lives. Sometimes their moans can be heard at night. The driver uttered. His voice sounded indifferent as if he was telling bedtime stories. I felt something cold slide down my spine. I wanted him to speed up to get home as soon as possible, but something kept me silent. It was as if these places and stories had some strange magnetism that made me listen to his tales. The next stop was an abandoned psychiatric hospital. Its windows were shattered and the walls were covered with graffiti. The driver looked at me through the rearview mirror. His eyes were cold and lifeless. Here, in this hospital, a doctor conducted gruesome experiments on patients to cure their minds. But instead of healing, he only deepened their madness, creating dark labyrinths in their consciousness. He spoke slowly, savoring each word. I felt my hands clenching the seat. I hoped that this trip would end as soon as possible. Finally, we stopped near my home. I hastily exited the car and didn't even turn around to thank the driver. However, when I turned around, the taxi had already disappeared. The street was silent, no trace of the car, no trace of the driver. I never encountered that strange taxi driver again in my life.
Every city has its dark secrets. Our urban legends were born in dark alleys and old bars, hiding from the eyes of ordinary citizens. One such legend was about a night taxi driver, a silent driver whose eyes reflected nothing but darkness. One day, I decided to face this dark secret head on. It was well past midnight when I ordered a taxi to return home after a late meeting with friends. The order was accepted, and in a few minutes, I saw a black cab slowly approaching the curb. The driver didn't utter a word as I sat next to him. I gave him my address, and he nodded, focusing on the road. The car raced through the deserted night streets, and I felt uneasy about this strange silence. All I could hear was the engine's sound and my thoughts. Some items were folded on the back seat, covered with cloth, and I became curious about what was there. Suddenly, I realized that the driver had taken a wrong turn. We were moving in the opposite direction from my home. I tried to talk with him, but he didn't respond. My voice grew more anxious, but the driver kept silent. His face was calm, as if in a trance. Panic engulfed me as we approached the city's abandoned industrial area. In his eyes, I saw something ominous, something abyssal. I tried to open the door, but it was locked. I banged on the glass, trying to get out, but all in vain. Suddenly, the car stopped. The driver stepped out and opened the trunk. I was horrified when I saw him returning with a large, sharp knife. He slowly opened the passenger side door and seized the moment to attack me. But I was ready. I kicked him, knocked the knife out of his hands, and dashed out, grabbing a stone from the ground. I hit him on the head, and he fell onto the asphalt, unconscious. I called the police, and within minutes, they arrested him. This taxi driver was the serial killer the legend spoke about. My blood ran cold as I realized I had faced a living urban legend face to face and survived to tell the tale. The evening was cold and the day sped by, leaving nothing but dissatisfaction and fatigue. I needed to get home. I called a taxi through the app and shortly, a car arrived. I sat in the back seat and immediately noticed something odd about the driver. He looked at me through the rearview mirror for a while before starting the car. Where to? He asked, even though the address was already in the app. To Fulton Avenue, 18, I replied, trying to occupy my mind with something more pleasant than the day that had just passed. The car moved and I closed my eyes attempting to relax. Suddenly, the driver spoke up. Had a tough day, her. Seems like you had some trouble at work. He looked in the rearview mirror, his eyes searching for mine. I was startled. How could he know? I wasn't in the mood for conversations, but his words sounded strangely accurate. Yeah, but it's all right. I said with a nervous smile. You're lying. He murmured softly, and his eyes turned cold. Fear gripped me. I looked at my phone screen, checking how much time was left to get home. But then I heard his voice again. You're scared of me. And that makes sense. I know what you're thinking. I looked at him, astonished. It became clear that he could somehow read my thoughts. I tried to convince myself it was just a coincidence, but deep down, I knew something was off. His face remained expressionless, but his eyes had a strange glow. How? How do you do that? I barely managed to utter. He smiled. It's simple. People lie. Always. And I can see their lies and the truth. He glanced at me, and I saw something horrifying in his eyes. This ride was gradually turning into a nightmare. He continued. You need to do something good. 
do something to earn your salvation. So tell me the truth, tell me what bothers you. I stared at him, unable to look away. My mind was flooded with fear and dread. I felt that something terrible could happen if I didn't tell the truth. He saw my thoughts and smiled. I began to talk about my issues at work, about the constant stress and anxiety I felt. He listened attentively, not interrupting me. When I finished, he nodded and stopped the car. That's it. You're home. I quickly got out of the car, feeling the fear leave me with each step, but I knew that this horror would never leave my thoughts.